We've just come back from a holiday down in Tasmania and uh, between the 12th and the 23rd of March 2019 um, and we flew straight down to Hobart and stayed at Eagle Hawk Neck and we did um, well we spent time around Hobart and during that time we went on an amazing uh, cruise a Pentecost cruise down the coast of the Tasman Peninsula and then we traveled this is the route that we traveled we traveled across to Queenstown um, via Lake St. Clair and we did another cruise along uh, in Macquarie Harbour um, and up the Gordon River and we traveled up to uh, Corinna and in Corinna we did another cruise along the Pyman River and from Corinna we traveled up to the north coast and along the north coast from Burnie down to Launceston and spent a day there and then we traveled back to Hobart via Richmond and took the plane away. After traveling across to Queenstown uh, where we spent a night in the mine manager's house which is a luxurious preserved old house is now a boarding house or a guest house and we stayed there overnight. So this is us departing from uh, Lion Street in Eagle Hawk Neck and we're off to the west coast. We've stopped at a historical little town called New Norfolk and we've stopped for our first coffee of the day and the Pembertons are there getting the coffees out as Carmen and uh, next to the, the Derwent River and John tells me the trout fishing is the thing here very pretty and um, these are blackberries up in front here and many blackberries in this region and, and very pretty John says that it's, there's salt water all the way up to here so we're quite a long way inland and um, the river boats used to be able to come all the way up here so. and there's a pretty scene of the two ladies having lunch at the jetty at Lake St. Clair and look at the weather, perfect weather. So we're at Lake St. Clair, as I said, at the boat launch jetty. And I'll just show you around, I'll show you the edges of Lake St. Clair. The sun's behind me, so it's pretty good. And I can hear fish plopping in the water behind me. And it's quite a big lake. And this is gonna hit you in the eyes, but I wonder if you can see if I go across right to the other side. And I'm gonna zoom in. I wonder if you can see a building on the other side there. I can't in my lens but right on the other side is a okay so I've had my eyes open here we're on our way to Queenstown we're about 45 k's from Queenstown a nice uh, dollarite jointed dollar dollarite up the back here but these are what they refer to as the button grass plains okay so and I thought it was the grass you know, I always thought button grass was a grass it's not it's a kind of a it's a kind of a sedgy thing um, uh, I think it's Lepidospermum and these little black things on top of the, the little seed clusters on top of the plants is what where the na name comes from in terms of they look like little buttons on the ends of the stalks hence button grass it's very very beautiful it's a sort of a sort of a yellow contrast with the green We're in Queenstown in Western Tasmania and uh, we're staying in this converted mine manager's house because this is a mining town. I'll show you the rest of it in a minute but there are huge bedrooms with double beds and all sort of old photographs and things on the wall but the mine manager's house blotted out by this tree in front of me here which is a lily pilly by the look of it uh, and there's Queenstown laid out below. So that's the little town of Queenstown presumably that looks like the main street with the whatever town hall or something like that that colorful building there and then it has the backdrop of the mountain and then if you go over this way a bit of a shocking sight of tailing stumps from the mine and Queenstown is sort of infamous for um, whatever they did here caused all the vegetation on the surrounding hills to die and it looks like that hasn't come back yet from that hill there but 
the lower level down there was, is all right. So I'm curious to find out more about what they were mining and how come they poisoned the vegetation. But it's a very quaint little looking town. Carmen's Raymond is an artist and we've actually imposed on him, he's busy working and we're inside his gallery. And, um, so he's got his art on the walls. And then uh, I love this bit here, it's my favourite actually, I didn't want to say so. But there, I love this, this looks like maybe a pastel drawing along there. Single girder on a bridge or something. I think that's terrific. What a decorative thing here. And Raymond is crazy about orange, obviously, because the kitchen is totally orange. Uh, this is the main street in Queenstown, Tasmania, so, view of the mountain up there, a variety of buildings on the main street. Here we have our friends and that's a bank that's been bought by a Melbourne couple and it's now an artist centre. A bit of an artist colony thing happening here. So this is a creek that runs through Queenstown really and um, you can see this is a very polluted creek so that orange is not just there pretty, it's a sulphurous uh, deposit in the water and apparently what caused all the trouble was burning uh, iron pyrites in with the ore for various reasons and iron pyrites is sulfide basically it's iron sulfide and then if you burn it you, you create sulfate and that that goes to with water that becomes sulfuric acid and sulfuric acid and vegetation don't really mix very well so that's what's burnt all of the plants and things it's this sulfuric acid Uh, we're in the parlour, mm, like a breakfast room, in the general manager's house. And I'm not eating, but my co travellers are all eating quiche, avocado, tomato, and drinking wine and discussing politics. No guns and things. And they just said to me.